Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to configure your OpenTX radio as a joystick on Windows 10. Then I'm going to show you how to configure your radio to use it on a flight simulator. Then we're going to connect it to a very new and modern flight simulator called Wings, which was just released. It's a very cool sim and it's got a focus on FPV and FPV racing, which is really neat. And then we'll close the video by running Wings and showing you what it looks like. Before I get into the content, I'd like to invite you to join me on Patreon. On Patreon, I've got a couple of different membership tiers that give you varying levels of inside access to the channel. You'll get inside information, a monthly newsletter, behind the scenes footage, advanced notice of product reviews, and that kind of thing. So if you'd like to support the work that I'm doing here on RC Video Reviews, please visit me on Patreon and sign up. All right, let's get into it. Before we can configure your computer, we have to make sure your radio will behave as a joystick when you plug it in. So we have to check one quick thing first. We'll do that by pressing the system button and then pressing the page key twice. And then we'll scroll left and we're going to look for this line called USB mode. And you want to set that on ask. You can set it to joystick if you want. But what that means is that every single time you connect it to your radio, it's going to behave like a joystick. The other option is USB or storage. And when you set it on that mode, every time you connect it to the computer, it's going to open up the file manager. If you plan on using your radio sometimes as a joystick and sometimes for USB storage in order to say access companion and push model configurations down, you want to leave it on ask. If you know that you're only ever going to use it as a joystick, go ahead and put it on joystick. But in my case, I'm going to put it on ask. And that way, when I plug it into the computer, the radio is going to ask me, what do I want to do? Do I want to use it as a joystick or do I want to open up storage? All right, with that option set, press the return button and go back to your home screen. And then on the top of your radio where you have your USB connection, just plug in the USB cable from your computer to the top of the radio. When we plug that in, notice that I get prompted for joystick or USB mode. And I'm going to leave it on joystick and just press the jog dial. When I do that, you hear the background noise on the computer saying, hey, new hardware has been connected. Now let's look at the computer and I'll show you how to make sure that your computer sees the radio as a joystick. We'll do that by clicking on the start button and then just type the word device manager. I can't say this happens 100% of the time, but if Windows does not recognize your OpenTX radio as a joystick after you've selected joystick mode on the screen, it's most likely due to the wrong device driver being installed for your radio. So with the device manager open, what we're looking for is this entry called libusb-win32 devices. If you see that, just click on the little arrow pointing next to it, double click on better underscore USB underscore HS, and hit the drivers tab and there's an option in here called update driver. Click on that and then click browse my computer for drivers and then let me pick from a list of available drivers on my computer. And when you do that, you'll see the second option down. It's there by default. I didn't have to add anything for this to happen. I just clicked USB input device and hit next. And when Windows says it's done that successfully, that's all you need to do, and from here on, Windows will see your OpenTX radio as a joystick. Now let's take a look at the radio itself and see what we need to do to configure it to work with the simulator. You can start with any four-channel model on your radio, and what I recommend doing is just cloning it and making a copy and naming it Simulator. So and you can see on mine, I've labeled my model Wing Sim. So the first thing to check for is make sure all your trims are centered. And you can see on my radio, all my trims are in the neutral position. And then real quick, let's take a look at the sub trims and make sure I've got the sub trims zeroed out as well. We don't want any trims set when we set up our model and my sub trims are empty. So that's good. The next thing we'll take a look at are the mixes and you can see on this model, I've got just four channels, aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. I happen to know in the simulator I'm using that you also need a reset switch or a respawn switch and it also supports flaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those and I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done. Okay, you can see in the mixes I've added under channel 5, SF, and under channel 6, LS. SF on my radio is a momentary switch. Remember, I switch mine. I, I move them on the inside, so I keep my momentary on the left. You can use any momentary switch you want. If you Even if you want to use a trim button, you can do that. And then under channel 6, I've got my left slider set up for flaps. And that's all you've got to do. Four channels for your four control surfaces, and then two additional channels for a reset and flaps. My understanding from Wings is that you can use any channel you want for your reset and your flaps, but I just use five and six. 
The next thing we want to do on our model setup is just make sure our timers are turned off. There's no real point in setting a timer on your radio just to have it pester you that your battery is running low. So just turn your timers off. And if you want to, you can use a persistent timer to see how much time you're spending on the simulator. It's probably also a good idea to turn off any switch warnings you have. You might even want to turn off your center beep for throttle. The next thing to do is just turn off your radios. There's no real point in having them for a simulator, so why not? Just save wear and tear and turn them off. That's it for the computer setup and that's it for the radio setup. Let's bring up Wings and get it connected and configured with the simulator. The next thing to do is configure the radio to work with the simulator. I'll cover where to get Wings later, but for now let's press on with the configuration. I have the simulator open and I'm going to hit the settings button and then under controls we're going to look for the label on our radio which is there and I'll click on configure controller. In my case it's mode 2 so I'm going to leave it on mode 2 and I'll hit next and now it says center all sticks including the throttle and trim. Well, we already zeroed our trim out when we set up the radio so I'm just going to center the throttle stick. I'm going to center my flaps where they belong and everything else is spring loaded so I'll leave that alone and we'll hit next. Now it says pitch down so I'll pitch down there's the pitch down. Now it says roll right, so we'll do that. Now it says yaw right, so we'll do that. Now it says throttle to full, throttles all the way up. Move or reset the launch switch to on, so I'll press my momentary switch. There we go. And now move the flaps to the full flaps position. There we go. Now it says move all inputs to their travel limits. So we'll do that, throttle all the way back, all the way forward. Yaw all the way left, all the way right. Roll all the way right and left. And then pitch all the way down and all the way back. So that looks good. Now I'm going to hit save and let's race. Single player, race, rural airstrip, select a track. And I like this Genesis track. I think that one's pretty cool. So I'll hit select on that and let's try it out. Three, two, one. I'll give you one little tip before you start racing. If you use instant trim on your momentary switch, make sure you turn that off before you start racing because what you'll wind up doing is every time you hit your reset switch, you wind up trimming yourself. <laughs> it took me a little while to figure out what the heck was going on. I was having some pretty bad races and I couldn't figure out why. It's because every time I respawned myself, I messed up my trim. But anyway, you can see on the simulator, I've got this blue line. That's the race line, and you kind of follow that around the pylons, and you hit these little orange things that are on fire. You see that orange thing right there? You hit, you fly over those, and that, that's kind of like passing a gate. And then once you've passed the gate, you hear that ding sound. And you just try and follow that blue line and keep yourself on, on the race line. This is a really neat simulator because it really, they focus on FPV. You know, there's definitely a heavy focus on FPV and FPV racing. And uh, I can tell you after just posting the video on the Z3 Autopilot and the X8, I mean, I wasn't doing this with the X8 because it's really not designed for that, but this is kind of what the experience is. I mean, obviously, you know, I've got other surroundings, like I can see my computer and stuff. I'm not on goggles, but this is the idea. And I can tell you that uh, if you've never flown FPV before and you want to kind of give it a whirl, you can get a taste of it with this simulator for sure. Especially if you go into, say, full screen mo mode. You know, the guys that are really good at this, they'll have a real tight race line. My, I'm not that good at it yet, but the guys that are fast, they'll have real, really good race lines. Oh, I missed the gate. Can't do that. You get, if you miss the gate, you got to go back and hit it. Which, of course, will mess up your lap time.
Yeah, I missed that too. I, I'm getting a little bit of lag, so like I, I keep getting bumped off my line. Um, I, I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just saying. I can't seem to hit that reverse. There we go. Yeah, for some reason I'm just getting picking up a little bit of lag here. Final lap. And that's a completed race. If you're interested in picking up wings for yourself, I'll put the URL in the description, but it's wings-sim.com. And uh, you can see they're running a little bit of sale right now, 36 bucks. I thought that was a pretty reasonable price for what you get. It's definitely a newer style simulator with the focus on FPV and FPV racing. So it does also offer line of sight and multiplayer and freestyle modes or free flight modes so it's a lot of fun just to get in there and play around and and obviously the open tx radios work really well with it we've covered how to get the right driver installed for an open tx radio how to get the radio paired up with the simulator and working with the simulator correctly and then i gave you a little demo on wings well i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new material hits the channel for everybody else check out my affiliate links for amazon and banggood and don't forget i've got a t-shirt store that's all I've got for tonight. Take it easy. And then real quick, let's just take a look at the sub trims. And then real click, real click.